On today's episode of Watch Chair Go, we've got four lifts and they're running now. So it's time to lift something else up in the air. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jay Argo and today we are here in the warehouse and we're gonna talk about my background even before IT. We're gonna go back even farther. I used to build nightclubs. I've spent a lot of my life working in pro audio, pro video, pro lighting and stuff like that. And one of my favorite things are, you know, big pro audio systems. I've worked festivals and concerts, tons and tons of concerts. We had the biggest nightclub in all of Kansas. The capacity was like 1600 people and that place would be packed every night. Of course, we do fall festivals for cities all over the place and uh, bluegrass festival here in Kansas. So just so much stuff uh, where, I, you know, I got to have fun working with some of the biggest and best gear in the game. So obviously that's one of the reasons I'm very into big audio, which is what we're doing in here and legitimate lighting like high-end systems and Martin. And, uh, you know, we stay away from brands like Chave, uh, American DJ and Alation, stuff like that. I mean, obviously Alation's got some pro stuff now, but you go to the big boys when you want the good stuff. And today we now have 30 foot of 12 by 12 light duty truss, which should handle a 3000 pound load. We're gonna put about a 1000 pound load right up there between those two beams. So. Last night, my brother knocked out some uh, brackets on the plasma cutter. We're gonna use those brackets to shackle the rigging to that's gonna hold the truss, and it should be way overkill for what we're putting in the ceiling. Of course, uh, I, don't, I think I showed you guys, I've got aircraft cable. This is uh, some GAC. Steel Flex Lift All rated at, uh, the way we're gonna use it, about 5,000 pounds. Two of those, we're actually putting 500 pounds on each one, but basically you want massive safety factors when you're hanging stuff like this over someone's head. Now, I was only able to get a lot of the toys that I wanted for the warehouse because the production industry is one that has been destroyed by COVID, absolutely destroyed. Obviously in March, uh, 2020, basically everything got shut down. All events, you know, racing got shut down as far as our automotive related stuff, all the stuff like grid life, uh, immediately every concert and festival, they were all canceled. And most of these guys have been just sitting there with all of this equipment that they own, stuff like this, but warehouses full, and it's all just sitting dormant. So this stuff has to be refreshed continuously. I mean, obviously uh, you're buying new lights almost every year to stay up to date with technology and output and power consumption and stuff like that. It's a pretty crazy thing. So most of the production industry I'd say is, is laid off with not much to do right now. There's uh, it looks like there's a light at the end of the tunnel at the moment, but Live Nation set up a fund called Crew Nation. If you guys want to check that out, I'll throw a link in the description below. A subscriber to the channel, Michael, let me know about that. Uh, he was talking about he has a huge production company. He's like, man, we had to let everybody go. Like there's no money coming in to pay. And uh, I mean, what are you gonna do? Sit dormant for a full year with 50 employees? Another production company in Kansas City, DSS Productions. I know they were kind of in the same boat, but that's actually where I bought most of this. So I got some older toys out of it for cheap, uh, stuff that I was dreams when I was a kid. Uh, I was building this stuff at the advent of LED fixtures. We were paying like $300 for LED PARs. That's how new they were. Uh, everything was just insane at that point. So uh, a lot of my lights back in the day were high in systems track spots and uh, oh, lots of lots of old color mixers and stuff like that. And lots of moving mirrors because they were cheaper than moving heads. We just had a whole lot of fixtures in the clubs and uh, everything looks cool if you had a lot of it. I was technical director for three nightclubs and, uh, and then DJ'd and handled all of our entertainment. It was a lot of fun. Anyway, go check out Crew Nation if you would. Like I said, I'll throw a link below. It's not sponsored or anything. It's just to help out other guys in the production industry because it's a very rewarding industry with terrible pay. I'd say for the most part, there's no good pay, but at the end of the day, when you build a stage and you've got 15,000 people in an arena and you look at your work, you're like, wow, this is, it, it is rewarding. I mean, it pays you back in that, which doesn't, doesn't put food on the table. I've pretty much worked in production since I was a, a little, like junior high. And that's when I started doing pro audio and uh, we didn't have anything like we had today, but uh, you know, mix plays, sit behind the board, do all the wireless coordination, all that fun stuff. We're done with the history lesson. Let's move on to getting all this truss out of the truck, bolting it together and getting ready to throw it in the air. Step one, get all of this truss out of the back of the truck. Probably not too much, right? 
These only weigh like 40 pounds a pop. Ah! And another one. And the last one. Josh is here. You guys were wondering where he was at in the last video. Uh, so what we're gonna do now is, there's a five pin to three pin DMX converter in there with those bolts. <laughs> uh, what we're gonna do now is bolt this truss together, get ready to hang it in the air. So what we have here is grade eight, uh, five eighths hardware, and it has a big shank because I wanted to make sure there were no threads in case this ever moved. I figured it would keep it from abrading the thing. So here we have a whole bunch of awesome hardware and uh, this should be really cool when it goes together. Also, this is, should be way overrated for what we're holding as well. Yeah, times four at each joint? Times four, Yeah, exactly. This ham radio station is gonna be killer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited to get this antenna up. Yeah, we'll just put the antenna on that <laughs> end and just stand it up, no big deal. I just need to move all the tools out of there. We just finished all of it. Yeah, buddy. Check out our rigging points in the ceiling. We got to go up there with our spray paint stencil and put that they're rated for, uh, what is it, 200,000 pounds? Yeah. I th that's what the math said. Yeah, 200,000, no problem. So these guys, if you take a look at this well, it has like a half inch of backfill around the plate. It's just a two pass cap. Two pass cap? Hmm. 332 rod. Yeah. That's not too big of a load. It ain't coming off. I, do, I was like, <laughs> I guarantee you guys spent enough time up there making those passes, it, it but it's, <laughs> it is very good. So we are ready to uh, stick one into this up on the scissor lift and stick our shackle through there. I am pumped about this. 200 rule number one. If it leaks oil, it has oil. That's right. That's, that's, that's true. Horsepower. Leaks oil, has horse. Has horsepower. <laughs> that's right. As long as it leaks oil, it's got horsepower. I was going to throw cardboard under this, and I was thinking about changing the oil while it was running just to see if we could do something amazing here. That oil is 10 years old, 15 years old. <laughs> no. Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't tell them that. Yeah, I know. Clearly. Look, this thing sits in a field and has to start once every two or three years. And it starts every time. Somehow starts every time. The whole link has never had problems. Well, those boys had to weld and run, but I am absolutely in love with the truss. It looks, it really starts making this place look complete the way I wanted to. Now, after that balcony sticks out six, eight feet, it'll be, I mean, basically done. Then it's, you know, floors, walls, incredible. So let's get up here and start hanging some lights and uh, got a DMX controller for this thing. carrie has been over here programming all night. Got his whole programming kit over here. The processor is here, like I told you guys about for the sound system. So we will have volume controls. One of these dumped its config, but this one's good to go. You can select the source you want to listen to by just touching the buttons or hopefully it doesn't actually matrix switch like that. That'd be weird. And as you turn the volume up for like a zone, I can't turn the volume up. That's mute, off mute. There's the volume level and the volume knob shows the a VU meter that like dances with the music too. These will be all around the shop so you can just hit mute whenever I want to record. There's our BSS London processor that's going to go in the rack very shortly. A lot of you guys on Instagram saw the line array. It's JBL VRX. We are ready to start hanging this stuff. Uh, I'm going to go up there and start mounting some cheese and we will shackle the line array to the truss. It's, uh, it's a fully hard mount. I wanted some nylon in there for like, you know, a little vibration resistance, but hey, it'll be hard mounted and 
can handle just crazy amounts of weight up in the ceiling. So it's time to get up there and clean a few things up, set the uh, cheese that holds the line array where we want. Honestly, we just need to get Big Boy up there, the uh, high-end system shapeshifter. All right, if you want to see how this goes, we've got uh, quick releases here that go onto the bottom of this light. And here we have our, this is the cheese or the truss clamp, right? And uh, we'll pull this nut off of here. Pretty simple. It's all just, everything's just nuts and bolts in the world. It's all pretty simple. So set our quick release up here. Want this thing to mount basically like that. Washer. Uh, these are nylon lock nuts. Everything, I mean, you want everything to be as secure as possible. So go ahead and tighten this down. And then I will, I mean, it'll be tight, buried. And then there's also a safety cable that'll wrap the truss. And uh, all of our rigging, like I said, aircraft cable earlier, so it, it doesn't need any backup rigging on the truss. It's literally uh, a nylon like sheath on straight up cable. It's rated at 10,000 pounds the way we're using it, I think. It's kind of in a basket. So it's a modified basket. Need a workbench to do this on, that's for sure. There we go, we got a truss clamp to a quick release and uh, let's put the quick release on here. Just like that. Spring loaded, they lock in. This is gonna be awesome. We've got the pride and joy of my collection, the high-end system shape shifter. Uh, that one's hung and eventually we'll get those DL2s hung. The problem is you need like three people. I've seen one guy hang these. I don't know how they weigh 118 pounds each. It's one of the heaviest things in the entire rig and it moves around a lot. I don't want to put a bunch of weight on the locks. 118 pounds. So we'll get two people on the lift to uh, actually get that done. I'm gonna go up here and uh, zip tie all of our shackles to make sure they can never back out and make sure the clamps are tight, everything like that. Then we'll continue mounting more stuff. Pretty happy about this though. It's looking pretty good right now. Uh, obviously the truss started to sway already. So we'll load the back up with hopefully equally heavy fixtures. Sorry about the train, but we are getting there. Lots of progress. Let's hit this with our first test hit. Yes, there's an extension cord up there. It's very temporary power. Uh, we'll have the power coming out of the conduit like later this week. All right, girls, warm up. Oh, the Macs are homing. Where's the shapeshifter homing? I was trying. You can see everything moving around. <laughs> I am so excited about this. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Four Mac 301s, the shapeshifter. And please do not ask me how I just hung the line array by myself. I'm in a lot of pain, a lot of pain. Uh, that was not fun. Also, I still need to go up there and tighten down the cheese clamps that are holding that, but those go to uh, some loops and they're very, very, very tight. Everything will be zip tied to make sure nothing can back off. And I need to go tighten the actual clamps that are holding it. And then we're gonna tie the line array back to get the angle correct. Scott's coming over tonight. It's almost midnight. He said he'd be here at 1230. Uh, I wanna get this sort of running tonight. So I'm gonna wait on him to mount the next set of boxes because that's all I could do to get that thing in the air. It's, uh, I don't have that kind of power. But I'll tell you what does have that kind of power, our sound system. And now we don't have any power at all up there yet. I'll tie it all into the extension cord for now because we need to get music up and uh, shouldn't take too long. I'm gonna set a beam clamp back here on the red iron and we'll tie the beam clamp back to the bottom box. These $18 LED parts from Amazon, literally like the cheapest thing you could ever buy. Those are gonna go in the sides of the truss right there and right there to side light the truss. So the truss itself lights up. Trust light, definitely a pro gamer move. As you guys know, RGB everything. Well, Scott and I have been in here working for quite a while. After I uh, set the entire first line array set by myself, I, I didn't want to do that again. So Scott came over and we got the other one hung and we got the uh, LED pars hung and we got a lot of it wired and we did a lot of testing. And our testing was uh, successful. Very successful. I would say it, it is maybe, it's possibly too loud. We went outside, walked down the street and there's basically no difference from being inside. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a little loud. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for the neighbors just like a little bit. Uh, we're like at the neighbor's houses right now. Yeah. It's a little bit on the loud side, but that was obviously the intent. 
and uh, I don't turn it on until like 5 p.m. because the, I feel like it's a, a little bit mean to the neighbors if this thing's over here running. Just, just look at it. I'm so happy about this. You can see all the Macs, they're all perfectly spaced and shapeshifters over there and very soon we'll get the DLs up there. But there's actually one important thing I need to get the DL2s hung up. Obviously this is like a vintage fixture. Uh, I bought them because of how special they were. This is what I went to Las Vegas for. I got them for $200 each. Originally these were $55,000 a pop. And it was my dream fixture from when I was a kid. These have full computers in them. They're running Windows XP. It's the media server. This is like a Barco or a Christie digital projector out of an office. And it's basically just a moving head with a projector. So I'd have these done and we'd be playing GoldenEye on them right now. That's kind of the plan is to put an N64 in here and play some GoldenEye. I don't have the quick release brackets that go on the box. It's the one thing I didn't get with the fixtures and I reached out to the people I bought it from and they never said anything back. Unfortunately, I cannot hang these until I have those because that's what you mount your cheese to and then you can mount it on the truss. I think these actually need four clamps on those quick releases. They weigh so much, 118 pounds each. So if you happen to know where quick releases are for high-end systems DL2s and possibly ones and threes, they might interchange, uh, please let me know. It's the rarest quick release I've ever seen. Uh, it's not something you can easily order. And if I did order them, I think they're, they're hundreds of dollars each, which is not okay. I'll end up like building a mount that uses the handles on the side if that's what it comes down to. That's what we need to get the DLs done. Check it out, we're kind of ready for the Super Bowl. I'll uh, rewire everything, get some programming done. But first, Scott and I did a lot of cleaning and I know you guys are very excited for this. The Audi A6, the transporter Audi, is ready to be engine swapped. We pushed it over here. It's almost on the lift correctly. Uh, it'll work like that though, we got it pretty close. Now it's time to fork the engine over here and start tearing this thing down. So I cannot wait to get started on the Audi. Uh, the BMW is just hanging out up there because it's a good wait for the lift until I go get the tires and it gets detailed and we put the truck over here just because it looked cool. Anyway, that is it for today guys. Thank you so much for watching the entertainment update. Next up, the balcony and this place will really start to come together. Obviously, we'll get to floors and walls eventually as well. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchjrgo.com where you can get cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. This is really starting to look like what I envision now. I am so happy about that. Dreams.